Well, for some analysis on all of that, Ahmed al Barai is with me again in the studio. He's the columnist for Middle East. I, Ahmed, good to speak to you again. So we've just listed a number of attacks there, various different actors. Let's concentrate on this attack last night. What indicates who may be behind it? Definitely, whenever we have these kind of attacks, we need the, the, the blame or the responsibility is directly uh, headed toward either the Kurdistan Workers' Party or ISIS. But in these kind of attacks, recently we know that uh, it's mainly masterminded by the so-called Islamic State because they directly target civilian um, uh, gatherings. They directly try to terrorize and destabilize the society, while the other uh, Kurdistan, Kurdish militias, they mainly target the security forces. And I've used the word masterminded there about Daesh. Now, of course, we know that some of these attacks are directed from like a central location in Daesh, uh, maybe Raqqa or, or Mosul or wherever. And some of them are lone wolf attacks. How do the security forces deal with them in different ways or are they dealt with exactly the same? In December 2015, there was the first release where the uh, Daesh released a kind of re a call for the conquest of Istanbul. And they called President Erdogan as Satan. And recently, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the so-called caliph of the Islamic State, uh, called uh, on the, his affiliates to, uh, to unleash their fire of anger uh, on the Turkish uh, groups and uh, troops inside Syria and Iraq. So what we know that they already gave their orders to their affiliates, their elements, whether inside Turkey or in the other parts, like, I mean, in Iraq and Syria, to attack uh, the Turkish troops. So what we believe in that it's not a lone wolf, it's a kind of organized mastermind kind of operation. The timing was very um, a deliberately chosen in order to achieve the message of terrorizing the whole society. Also, it's a kind of different message to other parties, mainly the, the people of Turkey, to try to uh, practice more pressure on their own government to uh, deter them from going on. Uh, in their uh, successful, so far successful, uh, operation inside Syria. So it's, it's a kind of multidimensional Absolutely. game. Absolutely, and of course, when that message goes out in the first place, once that message is said, that message is out there and it's up to these people from Daesh to then heed it and then act upon that. And you mentioned Turkey's actions in Syria, Operation Euphrates Shield. How much of that do you think is uh, now having repercussions on these attacks in Istanbul and in Turkey? Recently, yesterday, the day before yesterday, two most important Syrian offic senior officials of Daesh has been killed by the, uh, the Turkish Air Force uh, attacks or raids. So I think that this kind of uh, operation or offensive here in Turkey, a suicide or a kind of terrorist attack, it's a kind of vengeance to uh, these, uh, it's a, a immediately in the aftermath of that operation. So it's a kind of, again, a clear message to the Turkish troops that don't don't believe that if you carry on with this Euphrates shield operation that your troops or your people will be safe. We're going to attack you, we're going to target your uh, people and destabilize your society. So it's a kind of clear message to them and it's, I believe it's a venge for the, the people that the, the Daesh has lost. Mm -hmm. And this was more solidified in the recent images after they burned the two soldiers and they uh, deliberately and publicly declared that they're going to launch in the new year, uh, terrorist attacks against Turkey in Istanbul mainly. Yeah, I and mean, you mentioned the multidimensional nature of this. In terms of the Turkish security forces, just how do they try and defend against these kind of attacks? You can't close every large venue, you can't stop people going out. Just how challenging is it for security forces to try and stop these sort of things happening? It is definitely very challenging because these kind of terrorist, it's very, uh, terrorist attacks, it's very hard to predict. It's very hard to spot the, the affiliates, the people who are working there. Uh, Turkey has recently been carrying out real uh, intelligence operations here in Turkey, arresting some people who are affiliated to these groups, who have any kind of relations, investigating. But again, the, the, the network of these kind of terrorist attack, uh, terrorist organizations, it's a little bit um, uh, undefined mm. or you don't have the, the exact uh, a point to start with. It's a kind of a demouflaged in the society where it's not easy to deal with. That's the nature of these terrorist cells. Um, and again, they, they have good relations in the south and different. Turkey is a very 
a big a country where you cannot control them. This recently, the precautions have been taken to the New Year celebrations. More than 200, uh, 25,000 uh, people of the security forces have been deployed in Istanbul mainly, and these kind of uh, accidents happen. So it's not an easy job. No, it's not. Ahmed Abouraif, thanks again for joining us. Thank you.